Hi, ladies from Grace. Um, I wanted to do a Bible study today because it's been a while. It's a little windy, so I hope my my paper here doesn't fly away. But um, it's a lesson or a devotional that I prepared um, for Friday. I'm going to be um, teaching the same devotion on Friday, or I mean Saturday, but in Spanish. So my Spanish notes, I'm going to translate them in my head as I go um, in English. But um, we're going to read from 2 Timothy 1.7. And so if, if you have your Bible, I'm not used to reading in English as much, but I'm going to try and I'm going to pray first. Um, also, ladies from Grace, I wanted to ask you if you have a, um, just like um, anything that you want us to pray for, you can always comment or text me and um, we'll be praying for that. I know there's like a few things that, um, special requests that we've been praying for, but if there's something that you have and that I don't know about, just let us know. And I'm going to pray. Dear Lord Jesus. I thank you for this day. I thank you for this um, afternoon, beautiful afternoon. I thank you for this um, time that you give us, Lord, and um, even just the means that we have to be able to connect with each other. And thank you for being so good. Um, I ask you, Lord, that you bless um, Grace Baptist Church and each and every lady, um, and that this devotional will be a blessing to them, and that it's a way that I can connect with them. Thank you, Lord, for every, everything that you have given us. Thank you for your love and your mercy. In your name we pray. Amen. Um, I First of all, I want to thank the Lord because um, he's been so good to us. Ever since, you know, the whole quarantine, you know, started. I'm saying like, because my husband doesn't stay home. He goes to Minneapolis every day. So I, I think to him it's normal. Um, but, you know, I was so afraid to go out and the first two weeks I try to stay home just go out once a week and to the store real quick get what I needed and then go back and um, you know and now it's like um, now I notice myself or I caught myself hi Miss Hectoria hope you're doing good so Miss Hectoria I'm gonna share the lesson that I was telling you about yesterday during prayer meeting but um, I know some of the ladies are working and they're probably not even home right now they're busy but like I said, um, I'm going to leave the video there in, in our page and our church page so that you guys can just go over and, and see the devotional whenever you have time. Even, I understand, even sometimes we're home, but, you know, we're busy. We could be cooking or cleaning or, you know, um, doing something else. So just because we're home doesn't mean we're not busy, you know. Um, and so I understand. So that's why I'm leaving it in the page and then you guys can... Go ahead and um, see the devotional whenever you guys have a chance to. And so um, God has been good to us. And I like these days that we have um, had the, the prayer meeting because it's time to connect with different people. And I know yesterday I got to pray with uh, Miss Hectoria um, and be able to share um, blessings and what was in my heart and vice versa. And so it was, it was really nice. I like that. And so, ladies, um, if I'm going to read, my lesson is going to be based on 2 uh, Timothy uh, 1, 7, and I'm going to read it. It says, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but, the power, but of power and of love and of sound and of a sound mind. So God has given us the spirit of, he has not given us, the spirit of fear, but the, the um, spirit of love and of a sound mind. And the first word there is of power. And so, um, like I was sharing yesterday with Miss Hectoria, um, I know it's hard because when, when we think of power, you think what kind of power? And um, sometimes we don't understand that the fruits of the spirit it's not only so that we can be a, a better person and so that everyone can like us and we can have a better life but really um, the reason behind um, God giving us his word and 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 telling us to live by the spirit is so that we can have the fruits of the spirit and we can be a blessing to others and we can reflect Jesus Christ in our lives 
Um, I, I was sharing with Miss Victoria yesterday that when when I saw this, um, the spirit of of, of power, you know, um, my mind took me back of something that I went through. When we first moved to Minnesota, um, it, it was it was a little bit of a shock to me because my the first state that I lived in was Washington State. I had never seen a Muslim person, never in my life. Um, especially, I don't mean the religion, but you know the the way they dress. You know, especially uh, you know when they're all covered, completely covered, and they only show their um, their eyes and so that was really scary to me and so one time 15 years ago I went with my husband to Sam's Club and I saw a Muslim lady and um, she was dressed all in black and all you could see was like you know this part and even that part had like a little net and so I remember looking at her and feeling so scared you know, I was like, why is she dressed like that? You know, I don't, I don't understand. And then my husband had to explain to me, well, she's Muslim and that's the way they dress and that's their belief. And it was like a shock to me and I was so scared. Like, honestly, I don't mean it in a bad way, but that's just reality. That's how I felt. I was like terrified and almost like I was just staring at her with fear in my eyes and almost like moving away like I didn't know what to think and um, I started I started to think well um, why should I be afraid you know um, they have souls um, they're human just like we are they don't speak a different language well I mean they speak English most of them um, just like I have my first language they do too um, and so I started praying and asking God to help me to be a witness to them and never even like um, entered my mind because even with me being a being Spanish and being a, a Spanish uh, pastor's wife you know um, you kind of set your mind to like look for Spanish people at the store and you give them a track so back then it's like I wouldn't even carry English tracks because there was an English church and then we were the Spanish department so you know, we would look for Spanish persons and people and give them tracks. And so um, I started praying and I asked God to give me the power to give me the the you know, I would say, God, give me wisdom, give me the power so that I could wit so that I can witness to them and so that I can tell them, even if it's just God loves you and give them a track. And so I did. I started praying and then I told myself next time I see a Muslim, I'm going to give them a track and I'm going to tell them that God loves them, that Jesus loves them and tell them about the love of God. And so, you know, it, it took me a few times. I'm not going to lie that, you know, I would see one and be like, OK, next time, next time. You know, it, it was a little, you know, it was like a culture chalk. I don't know how to explain it, but it took a few times. And then I remember um, the first time it was at a at a like a part like a complex a building apartment complex and um we knocked at a door and i you know and, and a muslim came out and i started you know sharing you know how i was you know from from the spanish church but i wanted to give her an english track and you know it how the the track was explaining how she can be saved and go to heaven and you know she just kind of smiled and took it and that was my first very first time and I said okay it's not so bad they're not mean they're not rude they're not scary they're just humans they're regular people and so then you know I got the confidence to keep doing it and um and then I remember at a at a um at a plane I was on my way to California and then I got to sit with a a, a Muslim lady and um and I at I asked her, you know, if she was going for work or for business or, or just um, for pleasure. And she said a business. And I think she said she worked for Congress. And um, we started talking and she asked me why I was um, going to California. And I told her I was going to a ladies meeting and what we were going to do there and how we were going to learn about God and Jesus. And um, I, you know, smoothly started sharing the gospel with her. 
And at the end, she told me that, you know, the, um, the way I view Jesus and the way she viewed Jesus was totally different that, you know, she saw Jesus as a mass, uh, as a, um, teacher and how, you know, um, it was different for them. You know, I, I told her, well, you know, um, I read, uh, the verse, I don't remember exactly where the verse is, but I told her, you know, well, you know, the Bible says that Jesus is God and that one day, whether we want to or not, one day we will, um, bow the knee and worship him and everybody shall confess that he is um, the Lord and so I'm just paraphrasing the the verse and but I read the verse to her I took my Bible out and I read the verse to her and um and she was just like well you know I I don't I don't believe it I don't I don't view Jesus the way you view Jesus you know but I even though she didn't ask she didn't um receive Jesus and she didn't um you know, made a, a, com a confession, you know, but that just encouraged me to say, I can do this. You know, God can give you the power to witness to other people, even when you're scared and even when you feel like you can't do it, you know, God can give you the power to do it. You know, it was hard for me to just even think about, you know, going up to somebody, you know, and, and, and just um, starting even a conversation but it gets easier as it goes it gets easier and um and i thank god for that but um i wanted to share this there's a um a story that i heard about um elizabeth elliott and her husband they um his name was jim elliott it was like 1956 and they were um, missionaries to um i believe Ecuador the like the jungle of Ecuador and um, the story says that Jim and his friend Nate as missionaries they they were trying to work with these savages and um, in the jungle and these savages um, knew that you know they these missionaries were around so they kind of lured them and pretended to be nice and once they got close they um, tortured them killed them and then ate them and so these were um, cabinals. Um, I said that wrong, <laughs> but they ate them. Okay, these savages. Um, when they um, when word got back to Elizabeth, to um, she was at the camp and she was pregnant. They were they were just they were newlyweds, and so she was pregnant. And um, they told her uh, word got back to her, and they told her that um, that these savages. Um, what they had done to her husband and his friend Nate and they asked her they gave her the option if she wanted to go back to the US I believe she was from Oregon and um, she said no she said she wanted to go back to the jungle and talk to these um, savages and um, obviously they tried to you know uh, persuade her from going back to the US and not talking to them because they knew that they were dangerous but she didn't want to um they when the story says that you know they asked her if she was scared she says that her knees were shaking so bad like a you know like a just like a sheet of paper and she was she was so scared but she encountered this man and um she told him about the love of god and she told him that she loved them and that she forgave them and um, the story says that they were terrified. They were terrified because she told them that she loved them and that she forgave them for what they did. Um, and they didn't know what to say. Well, the, three years later, to make the story short, three years later, she had won to the Lord more than 3,500 savages from this jungle. And so um, what I learned from that is that there was this um, missionary wife that during something horrible that happened to her husband she had the choice to go back home where she could be comfortable where she could be protected where she could be safe but yet she decided to go back to these um, savages and tell them about the love of God because she was full of the spirit and she um, I can think of this verse where it said God didn't give us the spirit of um, I will read it again, the spirit of fear, but of power. 
And so you will think, well, um, I could never do this. I could never go to these savages and, and you know, tell them, you know, that I forgive them, tell them that I love them. I don't know how she did it. I wouldn't be able to do it. But if you have the right spirit, if you have the spirit of God, you can, you can do it. Because the Bible says, also, um, I was thinking this spirit, when you ask God to give you his spirit, I mean, this spirit doesn't come from us. Sometimes you hear people that say, um, you know, this is a great man of God, or this is a, a, you know, this woman, this virtuous woman, and, you know, and they lift people up. But honestly, we're just, we're human, we're sinners, and we're not perfect. The only, the only spirit, if, if anything good can come from someone, it's because God put it in there. It's because of God. It's not because of us. You know, God puts that spirit of power in us because we don't have that power. We don't have the power to love. We don't have that power of, you know, of um, to just do great things for God. We don't, it, that none, none of that is in us. God puts that in us. But of course, we can have the power of God or the right spirit if we are not searching for God. You know, we need to have a communion with God. We need to walk with God. We need to seek for that spirit. It, it, just because you want it doesn't mean you're going to get it. Um, I hear so many ladies um, give devotionals um, lately because I, I connect with, um, try to, you know, listen to different um, devotionals that can help me in my everyday life. And I'm, I think to myself, wow, they're so wise. Like they, all these, you know, thoughts, good thoughts and good sayings, and they come to mind. And, you know, it's not easy to talk in front of a phone and there's so many distractions and you have to keep focus. And I'm thinking, wow, they're so smart. You know, how can they come up with all of that without even looking at their notes, you know, but Honestly, I think it's it's from a walk with God. And, and when you read, when they have so many years, you know, just walking with God and reading their Bibles and, you know, it, it's easier for them to share what's in their heart. Um, every In every situation, I think that we can get something posi positive or something positive, I guess, can come out of it, you know, because the Bible says that we need the grace of God in every situation. Um, we, we know that uh, Philippians says, 4.13 says that um, we can do it all through Jesus. We can do anything through Jesus. And obviously by his grace. This is not something that comes within us. Or that is, you know, oh, she's just so positive. That's why she can get through any situation that comes her way. No, it's not. It's not. It doesn't even have to do with your personality. I think that if you seek for the Lord and if you ask God to fill you with his Holy Spirit and you walk and you have a walk with God and you have a life of prayer, God can fill you with his spirit and can give you that power to do things that you never thought you could do. I never thought I could, you know, witness to a Muslim person because even just thinking about the arguments that they would bring up, I, I wouldn't know how to answer. But God gives you God gives you the power. And sometimes you think about verses and, and you just start, you know, quoting verses. And then when you're done talking, you're like, how did, you know, I didn't, how did that come up? I didn't even remember that I knew that. But, you know, God, God gives us the strength and he gives us the power. Also, um, I think of the story of Elizabeth Elliot, how, you know, she had that love of God to be able to um, forgive those people that killed her husband you know honestly I'm not even gonna try like to lie like I don't know if I would be able to do that you do need you do need God and you need um you, need, you do need his power to be able to forgive you can't do it on your own even if you mentally prepare to say I would forgive you don't know until the time comes but definitely definitely if um, you have a walk with God and you have communion with God and you have the the um, the fruits of the spirit 
um, God can help us through those tough situations. Um, so I was thinking about that, you know, about how, how did she have that love to be able to go back and stay, you know, by herself and witness to all these people. But, um, you know, I, I'm sure they, they are thankful she did stay and they're thankful that um, she was able to forgive them and, and share the gospel. And, and three years later, more than 3,500 people were saved because of Elizabeth Elliot. Um, First Corinthians 620, I'm going to, I'm sorry, I'm not prepared, but with the verses ready, but First Corinthians 620 says, for ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So the Bible says that our body is God's and also our spirit. So why should we try to have a right spirit? Because that's how we can glorify God with our spirit. You know, um, I often think like, what is wrong with me? You know, when I'm not having the right spirit, you know, it's hard to have the right spirit sometimes when you're going through a tough situation, you know, and why do I feel empty? Why do I feel like, you know, everything bothers me and, you know, I'm just irritated and I'm anxious and, you know, something's not right. And then I have to go back and, you know, pray and just take time alone and pray, read my Bible, because it's true. Yesterday we learned um, during the Bible study that sometimes we can just read our Bible and not get anything out of it. You know, you didn't really nourish your soul. You just read as if it was a magazine or a book. But there, it's those times where I nourish my soul and you know I, I i study and um god speaks to me is where i feel stronger and i can feel like okay now i can i can try this again you know and so we need to have the right spirit and when we read there in second timothy um 1 7 it says god didn't give us a spirit of fear but of power and love so it is possible to have the right spirit even though we're humans, even though we make mistakes, we can. Um, I can think of questions, or I wrote down questions. I'll read them. What has God asked you to do that you haven't done? Um, is it witness to a mom, witness to your dad, witness to a sister, a brother, a cousin, a neighbor? What has God um, asked you to do that you don't want to do? Because see, when I said that, when the Holy Spirit or God asked me to witness to the Muslims, you know, um, and I was scared. I didn't want to. It was unknown to me. It, it, it was kind of playing in the back of my mind. And I kept saying, no, I can't. I can't. But um, then God helped me and I was able to do it. But in the beginning, I didn't want to do it. I was scared. So what has, what has God asked you to do that you haven't done or that you don't want to do? Maybe, maybe it's witness to a coworker or to your boss, and it scares you to think about their reactions, you know? How, how are they going to react? What are they going to say? What are they going to think? Is our relationship going to change after I witness to them? Well, you know, it's not up to us. It's not up to us and it has nothing to do with us. You know, our job is to do what God told us to do. And whether people react in a positive way or in a negative way, it's not up to us. We can't control that. We just need to obey God. I know recently, um, God asked me to, to and I, I'm saying because I, I felt strongly to do it, to send the plan of salvation, like in a video to, most of my contacts, people that I knew that didn't know Christ. And honestly, I was a little afraid to do that because there was family members, there was cousins, there was aunts, there was people I knew. I didn't know how they were going to react. I didn't know if it was going to upset them. I didn't know if it was going to offend them. I didn't know how they were going to react, but I did it anyway. And um, I got a few positive answers. I know, I know a few uh, people wrote back and said, thank you. It's what I needed and our, or I understood 
what the video said and I made a decision. I asked Christ to come into my heart with, with their own words. They told me and I understood what they did. And so I'm, I, was, I was thankful that I obeyed, I obeyed God in doing that um, because you never know. Sometimes we're scared and, and um, we think negative and we think the worst, but God can use that if we just obey. Um, so I said the spirit of power, it, it's nothing, nothing within us. We have to go to God in communion, reading our Bible, walking with God, and it's something that comes from Him to me by His grace. With love is exact the same thing. Nobody, nobody is a loving. Sometimes we say, oh, that person, they're just so loving, they're so kind. But the honest truth is that nobody is loving and nobody is kind. Like I know I'm not. By nature, we are selfish, we're envious, we are, um, we're not, there's nothing good in us. Anything that can come good out of us is because God, by His grace, you know, allowed us to, to, um, to do. Or, you know, like I said, by having the right spirit. You know, and which leads me to my se to my second point that if we have a right spirit, we will have the right attitude. You know, a, a person, you know, and I've seen it. You you can try to have, you can fake to have the right attitude, right? Like with our kids, you know, we ask them to do something, and they're like, okay, and then you ask them a second time, oh, can you do something else? Okay, and then you see how the okay and the nice face is fading away as you give more more um, jobs and so we can fake a good attitude we can fake a good attitude for a while but really it's not going to fade away if we have the correct spirit if we have the right spirit and so the way we can get the right spirit is by having a relationship with god reading his word praying having communion with god walking with god and then my last question that i have um, who has God asked you to love and you have refused to or forgive and you have refused to remember that God gave us a spirit of power and we can do everything you know we can love sometimes you know we have talked to people that have said I could never love that person they hurt me you know I could never forgive that person because they hurt me or for what they did to me but you know even though we're human we can do supernatural things <laughs> you know like forgiving somebody that hurt us you know to a regular common person it's just I mean it's it's obvious you know oh I mean you can forgive but not forget but the Bible says that we can that God God can give us that spirit of power to do anything that is in his will and it is in his will god wants you to forgive god wants us to love and if we ask him if we ask him to help us love that person he can help us if we ask him to to forgive to just give us a power to forgive that person that hurt us you know that talked about us that um that said lie about about us god can help us I remember um, back a few years back, um, a, a family, you know, in in our church, they they left mad at my husband, and um, they were upset at my husband, and they left the church, you know, saying lies, and for two weeks, I remember being bitter, you know, being upset, and thinking, you know, how can they say that they're saved when they're spreading rumors, they're spreading lies. They're spreading all these, you know, neg negativity, um, you know, just dividing the church. And, you know, it hurt me. For two weeks, I was bitter. It was hard to pray because I would pray and I, and I would tell God, God, I'm not mad at you, but I just need you to help me understand, you know, why, why are they saying this and, and why are they doing this? You know, we've been trying our best and it, it hurts, you know, but after those two weeks, I understood that I needed to forgive these people, you know, because they were being people. That's what people do in the flesh. And, you know, when we are not walking with God, we can be evil. 
And so I said, God, you know, give me the power to forgive these people, to love these people. And God helped me. You know, I and I honestly believe that God gave me the strength. God gave me the power to forgive them and to love them. And I, I held no grudge. Um, I have seen them, you know, again. They don't come to our church, and I have seen them again. And I was able to give them a hug and say, I hope you're doing well. And, and you know, it came from my heart because I didn't even think about it. Before giving them a hug, I just went to them and, and, and did it. You know, and if, and I just thank God that he gave me that power to, to forgive and to love and to just leave those things that aren't positive and that are not going to help me. You know, I know it's hard to let go when people hurt you, but if you don't, it's going to hurt you also. Um, the last thing that in 2 Timothy 2.1, uh, sorry, I don't have it right in front of me, but it says, um, thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. So Paul is telling um, Timothy to be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. If you notice, he's not asking him to be strong, you know, um, be strong like in your own power. He's telling him to be strong in Christ through his grace. And the only, the anything or that we can do, it's gonna have to be through God, by his power, by his love, by his grace. Because like I said, nothing, nothing good comes out of us. It, it comes from God. Um, and so he, um, Paul, I was thinking, Paul was inviting Timothy to serve and, and to be willing to serve God, but also to suffer for God because Paul had suffered a lot and he had he had suffered a lot and Paul had was already second Timothy he was getting ready for for his death and he told Timothy you're going to suffer and be prepared to suffer and be prepared to serve and you know I was thinking in this life as a Christian as Christians you know sometimes we think or like you know um, new Christians they think that because they now have Jesus in their heart and now they're coming to church and everything seems great and perfect that nothing negative or nothing bad will ever happen to them. But you know, um, the Bible is inviting us to be willing to serve, but also to suffer because suffering will come. It's just a matter of time. Trials are gonna come, suffering will come. We will cry, we will have, um, we will have to forgive in the future and we we are going to have to love those who don't love us you know a lot of times and you can think well i can't i, I could never do that i can it's very hard no we can't but that's why we have to there's nothing good in us but that's why we have to stay in in you know with a strong relationship with god so that god can help us love through him forgive through him and um and he can give us that power to do what he wants us to do because I can't do it on my own. You can't do it on your own. We need God. And in Second Timothy, like I said, two one, um, you can just read that. You know that chapter. It's a really good chapter. You can read it on your own whenever you get a chance, and you can learn a lot from it. And um, ladies from Grace, um, I did this video for you guys. I'm gonna leave it in the page so you can see it whenever you have a chance. Hi, Hermana Rosalina. Hi, Miss Tracy. And all the ladies that will watch later, um, may God bless you. I'm praying for you guys. We're praying daily for our church. We're praying for um, this situation that can um, go away soon and that we can get together again in church. Um, I miss you guys and I miss being all together. I miss being um, all together in church um, there's like only a few of us on Sundays and Wednesdays. Obviously, it's not the same, but um, I just hope that you guys can um, just stay in prayer, stay connected somehow. Um, shoot me a text here and there to let me know that you guys are doing well. And 
ladies hope you have a good afternoon um, may god bless you and just stay safe when you go to the store stay safe and try to do your your advice or run your errands quickly and get home okay ladies have a good afternoon bye bye love you all